guys, welcome back. Thank you so much for watching. I am Carl Murawski, and today we have a review of a product which was suggested by a viewer. If you remember a little while back, I put a link in the description below where you could go to a Google Doc where you could list, you know, anything you wanted to see reviewed, any topics you wanted to see covered. It was a great way for me to interact with you on what you want to see on this channel. The company is called Satchel and Page, and this here is their diplomat briefcase. This thing is beautiful. Let's get it out in the open right away. This thing has like supermodel looks. It really does. They did such a nice job with the color, the design, everything about it is just so elegant. It's such a nice departure, especially from what I'm used to and I'm sure what you're used to, which is these hyper masculine bags with all kinds of stuff all over them. Now, I love bags like that, don't get me wrong, but that's like having an F-150. It's a great truck, it does what it does very, very well. This is like having a Lexus, I don't know. A, a very nice luxury car because that's exactly what this is. It is luxury in a way that it just oozes out of it. It really is just so nice. Now, let's get the construction out of the way right off the bat so you know what I'm talking about. Now, what we have here is full grain French cowhide, which is then sent to Italy where it is vegetable tanned and finished. It has YKK zippers throughout. It has solid brass hardware and it uses polyester thread. The dimensions of this are 11 and a half inches high, 15 inches wide, and about four and a half inches deep. The weight completely empty is three and a half pounds, so while you're holding it and you definitely feel like you have something there, it is by no means burdensome. This is a full zipper design, which means that the zipper actually goes around three quarters of the bag, and then it opens up like a clamshell. And this is a lot different than your typical messenger bag or briefcase, which has a flap going over it. This is a much more simple, streamlined, and elegant design. The padded laptop sleeve being in the center is important because if you're gonna go and put your laptop into this thing, well, that being right in the middle means that you don't have to worry about these rugged zippers on the outside scratching the finish of your laptop. And if you have something like a MacBook Pro, you know, that's an expensive laptop. You really don't want it to be all scratched every time you're putting it in or taking it out of your briefcase. So having that right in the middle is a really, really good design uh, that, I mean, they really put a lot of thought into. It is also secured by this very, very nice and thick strap leather strap which then closes with a little stud closure very very nice very very elegant and of course there's little compartments around things like uh, you know a card case pens uh, zippered compartments so you have a little place for almost anything that you need and it has I'm so thankful a key leash if you know me you know I love key leashes for my briefcases it helps you find your keys without any problems a couple of the little details that I like are things like this so this I believe is called a lobster claw uh, clasp right here and it's it's much different than the typical dog leash clasp I'm sure you know what I'm talking about it's sort of shaped like a G and you pull down the center well this one sort of opens up like that I like that a lot and the first place that I saw this was on one of Bassiter's bags I just thought it was a great idea because you have basically a double loop closure that's really not coming off of there the other thing that I like about Satchel and Page and what they've done here is they've managed to make it masculine and robust. I mean, look at these D-rings. Look at the look at the hardware on the outside. It is just as thick as anything I've seen in the past, but they've done it in such a way that it's elegant. So it's kind of like, I don't know, I, I keep trying to find like automobiles to compare this to. This is almost like a Mercedes G-Wagon or something where you know it's tough and it's durable and it's rugged, but it's done in such a manner that it's elegant too. So you could roll up pretty much anywhere and not feel out of place, but it still has the goods to, to last a long time and not be too fragile. So they've done a great job balancing these things. One of the other things that I really like is on the back here, you will see a little strap, which seems like it doesn't really go anywhere. Well, what that's for is for the traveling guy. So if you are in the airport or going anywhere with rolling luggage, which has the handle that extends up, this is designed to go around that. So you can easily set that right on top of your luggage and secure it down and not have to worry about it. I mean, like, that is just, that's a little design right there that, that I don't know, it just shows a lot of thought. And I really appreciate that. The nice thing too is, let's say you're somebody who's afraid of flying and you, or you just don't travel very much. Well, you can easily undo this. It's not actually stitched in or anything. You can remove that without any problems. So that's a design element that I really like. Now, one of the things that you don't see much anymore is feet on a briefcase. And this has that. So one of the nice things about having feet on your briefcase is when you set it down, let's say you're on the subway and you have to set your briefcase down to answer your phone or something. Now. 
if you don't have these, then that whole bottom of your briefcase is just sitting there on the subway floor, and that, that can be a pretty nasty place to be. Then you take that and you go put it on your desk, and then you eat lunch off your desk. Now, if you're a germaphobe, this has probably already got you screaming and running for the hills. Having those little feet, while it doesn't totally eliminate contact with what you put it on, it certainly minimizes it and, and just kind of keeps your very nice Italian vegetable tanned leather away from whatever nasty stuff you're putting it on. So that's kind of a neat little detail, something that you don't really see very much and it doesn't add much as far as weight, but you can tell that they're thinking about this stuff. Now, another detail that I like, and it's sort of hidden, so you have to go looking for it. And uh, I actually emailed Satchel and Paige just to make sure that I was correct in uh, my assumption at what I was looking at here. This right here, this is a solid copper rivet. Now, if you don't know a lot about leather construction, I am learning myself as, as I see all these great products and, and I experience them and review them and do a lot of research, I'm learning about this stuff myself as well. A lot of times what you'll see as far as riveting goes is one of three different types of rivets. You have your rapid set rivets, which you can easily tell because if you look on one side, they'll be hollow through. So there's the, the base of it, the section that actually goes through the leather, and then the cap. And these are easy to set, they're very cheap, they're, um, they're quick, they do the job, not really a problem. Then there are double cap rivets which have a sealed cap on either side, but at the top of the food chain are solid copper rivets. What this is, is a base with a post of solid copper, then a washer is put over the top of that, you cut off the stem of the rivet and then ball peen it over. And what you essentially have is one of the strongest type of rivets that are out there as far as leather work is concerned. And the only way that you can tell is that usually it has sort of a flat top to it. It'll almost look like a small version of a penny. And uh, that's something that you only see with, with solid copper rivets. And just knowing that they included these in here and they're not in a spot where you can really see them, it gives you a hint to the thought that was put into this bag and what they want it to do. So rather than using something like a rapid set rivet, which would have been much, much cheaper, much easier to put in. So they've opted for some of the strongest rivets available and it's even bolstered by some more stitching around there. So that gives you an idea of what they want this bag to do, which is they want it to look good, yes. And that'll be the first thing that draws you to it. But when it comes down to what really counts, it has it. Now the final detail that I want to show you is this right here. So there are straps of leather which go around the entirety of the bag here. And where they attach right here, where they loop around to accommodate this little ring right here which goes up to the handle, you can see, if you look at it very carefully, they've actually tapered and cut away at a, at a, you know, a taper on the edge here their leather so that this comes up, it goes around, and it doesn't come back and then have to you know, hit like a bump or something like that. It's tapered nicely and it goes back. Now, again, this is probably not something that you would notice unless you were really kind of a geek about this stuff the way I am. It's little things like that that just, they add to the overall look of the bag and uh, that, that just gorgeous, unassuming nature about it. And, and it's just kind of an elegance that you, you really can't put your finger on why it's there, but you just know it's there. Now, the only thing that I would change about the exterior of this bag is I would like to have a full length pocket because sometimes if you go to a meeting and you leave with a bunch of paperwork it's nice to be able to just sort of throw it into an outside pocket on your briefcase because that way you don't have to open it up and you know find a place for it that would be nice to have however really with their design and the way they've they've tucked these edges here and the straps and everything like that i can see why they went with this sort of narrow pocket right here which is really just big enough probably for your phone you know i understand why they did it However, it's still one of those things that I just wish I had, which was an exterior pocket. Now, that being said, I really don't know how they would incorporate it into this design without looking funny, so that's probably why they left it off. Now, the leather that makes up the bag is six ounces. The leather that makes up the strap is eight ounces. They wanted a bit of a thicker leather, of course, for the strap because anything that's hanging is gonna take a little bit more strain. And right there on the edge, you can see some more of those beautiful copper rivets, the ones that I love. See, these right here, they take, they take more time because you have to cut them, you have to peen over the edges, and man, they did such a nice job. That's really not easy to do. I've tried. I've tried setting copper rivets, and I'm horrible at it, so <laughs> if anybody can do it, I, I'm impressed. So what is the price for all this Italian vegetable tanned, uh, copper riveted goodness? 425 bucks. That's it. That's a really good price for something like this with all that thought put into it, the beautiful materials, the finishing, the elegant look, and, and some of these, these details that I've pointed out to you. I mean, 
that's a good price anywhere you look. And especially when you look at this, you know, the first thing I think of is like Louis Vuitton or some of those really super high end designer brands. It has that look about it, but you're not paying that price. So if what you're after is something a little more streamlined, a little bit more elegant, just a little bit more, I don't know, grown up, well, this is definitely, definitely the thing that I would suggest. I just think it's beautiful. So that's the Satchel and Page Diplomat, guys. I'd like to thank Max for suggesting this brand. Um, you know, that Google Doc really helps out a lot because there's so many different brands out there doing so many cool things, and it's really hard to keep up on them, even for somebody like me who, who loves this stuff. And rather than checking sports scores, I'm, I'm searching different websites for cool brands like this. So uh, thank you so much for bringing that to my attention. If there's anything else that you would like to see me review in the future or an idea for a video, please feel free to add it to the Google Doc in the description below. And that's all I got for you today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And I will see you next time.